Hey everyone, this is Sira Sela. Welcome to the Elpa podcast. Elpa is association of players in your league, which aims to collectively represent players and help their careers. We will be bringing you conversations with current and former Euroleague players and other personalities from the world of basketball. Our guests will talk about their journeys, on and off the court stories, and look deeper into what it means to be a vital part of the basketball industry. Like I said, basketball in itself has been an extreme blessing to be able to see the world, right? Um, I don't know if I would have been at, to be able to see so many of these beautiful places without this game. Um, so, um, and I've enjoyed learning different cultures and learning, you know, meeting different people. This is all because of basketball, so. Today, my guest is Derek Brown. Derek is one of the vice president of ELPA. We talked about the association and his involvement, but we also discussed about his journey in the NBA and about travels, how players are ending going from countries to countries, being on the road every week, the adjustment when signing in a new country. Enjoy the conversation. So, can you talk about your journey as a basketball player? My journey with basketball probably started uh, about eight years old, um, playing in the playground and in uh, the backyard of kind of my neighborhood, um, just to, to get out with my friends. Um, and now, you know, at 32 years old, I'm still lucky to be able to play the game um, for a living. So it's it's been an amazing journey, just a lot of ups, a lot of downs, um, but something that I cherish and I appreciate because the game of basketball has given me so much more um, perspective on life um, and my life experiences. So um, something I'll probably always be indebted to. I mean, I'll never be able to give basketball, you know, what basketball yeah. has given me. So I'm thankful for that. And how did you fall in love with basketball? Like you had to play and then fall in love? Or it was amazing. I don't think every person is different. For me, it was just uh, I enjoyed it as a kid. Um, and I, when you enjoy something, you you know you want to do it all the time. Yeah. And by wanting to do it all the time, I just got better at it. And it didn't hurt to be tall as well, you know. Uh, <laughs> so uh, after. Our, uh, I, I realized that I had an opportunity to play um, basketball for scholarship yeah. was probably the biggest goal of mine um, to uh, be able to get to a university um, and everything else after that really was just bonus for me. And then after scholarship you realized that you could be professional and... Um, like I said really my goal as a kid or growing up uh, was to to go to to go to school, you know, if I could use that to to ha to pay for college, to me that was like a um, that was like a dream yeah. that in itself. So yes, anything after college for me, you know, it really was bonus. Um, so I'm I'm very thankful uh, for that. All right. So you're a member of the Euroleague Players Association, and it's even more as you're part of the board. How important is it for you to be active with Elpa? It's extremely important. Um, just from being in Europe for so many years, you understand uh, what a lot of players go through or have been going through. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, when, as soon as uh, Boston came with this idea, um, it was like a no-brainer for me yeah. to be a part of, even if it doesn't necessarily affect me. Yeah. You know, it was one of those, all right, I know if I could be a part of something like this, it can affect somebody um, in the future or, or a young kid who's coming up who might have the opportunity to play in Europe. So mm. um, as it was a no-brainer. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, so thankful for the opportunity to be a part of something like this. So last year you were not playing and yet you paid the fees for Elpa. Mm -hmm. And also you were in the US mm -hmm. and you, you managed to come in Barcelona for the meeting. Can you explain why you, you got into it on your own? So maybe? I mean, it's, I think it first shows your commitment to something. Yeah. You can't 
expect someone else to believe in something if you don't believe in it. Um, obviously, uh, I didn't play last year for a few reasons, yeah. but um, <laughs> that doesn't mean that I, I didn't want to, uh, I wanted to show my commitment to uh, the association. Yeah. Um, and it's important. Um, I can't ask anybody to support if I don't support, even if I wasn't playing, you know, because I'm, mm. I'm, a, I'm a member and I, um, I signed up for this, so I'm in it for the, uh, the long haul. So um, I think it's, I can't do something that just benefits me. Yeah. Um, so that's why I wanted to make that statement and show that uh, it's important. Mm. So is you achieved major improvements in only one year? Which one has the biggest impact according to you? Uh, so I mean for the player mostly? For the player, I would say probably the, uh, the workload on your body, like the practice schedule. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've been a part of times where, you know, you literally had two a days yeah. almost all year, you know, um, and limited rest um, and you get a better player you know I think that's some things that so the so coach it is that you can practice five days a row without having a day off after right I mean I just think clubs will see that they'll actually get a better player from that um, it's, it's actually helping the club as well because yeah. a fresher player with uh, in, in better shape taking care of his body more will give you a better product. Yeah, so yeah. It, it doesn't just help the player. Um, I think it helps all parties involved. Yeah, so it's a whole picture. Correct. So through your experience, how can Elba be helpful to a player coming to, from the NBA to Europe? Very helpful. Um, number one, the NBA has a, already has a players association. Yeah. So to kind of have a familiar transition, uh, something that I think uh, NBA players would, would like uh, a common voice and to know that you're protected to some degree even if it's not as much as maybe the NBA it's, it's a start and to feel like somebody cares about your best interest yeah. um, you're, not just a player. you're not just a player or even if you are just a player in their mind you, you have a collective unit of people yeah. and a voice that for that speaks for yourself so I think it's very important. <laughs> so you played in the NBA for many years. Do you like traveling? Because in the NBA you like travel a lot. Yeah, it's, it's a different experience. I mean, there you're traveling state to state, right? Um, over here you're traveling country to country. Uh, so it's a, it's a, like I said, basketball in itself has been an extreme blessing to be able to see the world, right? Um, I don't know if I would have been at to be able to see so many of these beautiful places without this game. Um, so, um, and I've enjoyed learning different cultures and learning, you know, meeting different people. Mm -hmm. This is all because of basketball. So um, I would say to someone who's hesitant about trying to maybe make that decision to come to Europe, to, to give it a shot, to yeah. try it out, because it'll, you'll never be the same person. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's kind of impossible to have these experiences and be the same person. So when you were playing in the US, what were your habits to manage the strain of all the travels? Um, that's when you learn to kind of be professional. I mean, you have to take care of yourself. Yeah. Um, otherwise, you, you physically just can't do it. You know, you learn, that's when you learn how to manage your sleep and you learn how to manage your diet yeah. and, you know, uh, you, it's, it's, it's different than even college. College, it was prepared for you more so. You have a bunch of people. Exactly. You have take, people are taking care of you. You yeah. have to be here at this time. You have to do study hall at this time. You have, you have, to, eat. That, you have to eat this time. Yeah. You know, as, as a professional, you kind of have to learn your own schedule um, and what works for you. Yeah. So do you have some memories or anecdotes from all those problems? Um. I feel like throughout the time of traveling now, I try to always, like they say, when in Rome, you know. Uh, so I try to take that time to 
learn whatever little culture it is that I can, right? Instead of bringing, I always say this, instead of bringing, you know, America or your state or your city or the way you grew up to somewhere else, you, you need okay. to adapt to what, where you're going yeah. and the, the type of culture that you're around. And it's, I think it's more so respect than anything. Um, it's respect. Uh, I've, I've noticed sometimes how um, the world looks at mm. sometimes even Americans and how they're closed minded and how yeah. they think everything is, you know, basically uh, their way. Uh, and you notice that. So you, I, I think that's one thing I've learned over the years is just to adapt to other people's culture and try to learn what their thought process is and why they do things the way they do things. Yeah. Um, and if you do that, uh, you'll, you'll learn so much. Mm. And you manage to do all that even if you, because your travels are like few days, you're not staying like one week and it's not only days, it's still work. And you still manage to try to learn the culture and everything. Something, you have to learn something. You can learn something one hour, two hours, right? Yeah. You can have a conversation with somebody for 20 minutes and learn mm. something. You just have to be open to to really do that yeah. so um yes there's no excuse on you need to be there mom for you have to live there three years or you know you can learn if you're in town for uh three days you can learn something about the culture yeah. and, and respect it so first time you came in europe it was with locomotive to mm -hmm. Berlin, right what was different when you came here everything <laughs> 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 what was it different um that was a big culture shock for me. I think I was like uh, maybe 24, maybe 24. Yeah. And uh, not only did I come off, I went to Russia for, as my first kind of experience. Yeah. Um, so in the beginning, it was definitely a culture shock, but um, I embraced it. You know, it's like you're here, embrace the opportunity. And I learned a lot on the court. You know, I became a much better player. And then, you know, off the court, I just became more well-rounded, and uh, I contribute a lot of those experiences to who I am today, so I'm thankful. And how did you adjust to the European way of life? Uh, I guess I drink, as you see, I drink way more tea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I can speak a a few languages yeah. a little bit you know obviously conversational not fluent um what was the most difficult thing that you had to adjust is the food the language the habits um different place different you know i wouldn't say there's one thing it's the whole uh, the, just just in general wherever you're at is you it's different yeah. it's different um customs are different the way you eat is different the when certain things like personal space might yeah. be different right if you're you know an airport you might be used to being alone in america maybe yeah. but in the states you know i mean um in europe sometimes everything is close or or size of things mm -hmm. you know um in america everything's big in europe everything's small yeah. um you know it, it's things that eating the food right uh, something just like that uh there's so many, so many different yeah. things. So. so what about European basketball? European basketball, I like a lot. Um, from the standpoint of every game matters, mm -hmm. you know, that's something I immediately know, uh, knew when I got over here. It's there, you know, when I was playing in the States, there was 82 games, you know, there, the value of each game didn't have the same um, as it does in Europe. Yeah. Um, and then also the fans, right? Uh, a lot of these European teams have also have soccer clubs, okay. so it's a it's a kind of a more of a family unit, and uh, they people people truly care about about the fans and mm. uh, about you know how you're doing personally. They're very much involved, mm. so uh, that was the main thing. Uh, is everything matters. Every game matters. There's no. Um, there's no, no time, time. yeah there's no time <laughs> to waste definitely not so there's less travel but the conditions are not the same i mean i think it's like better in the nba mm -hmm. how how do you feel about this um 
it's tough. I mean, like I said, you're going to travel. You're going country to country. Yeah. Um, in some countries, you're on a three diff- three hour time difference or four hour time difference. Yeah. So, um, you're not necessarily. And some flights are long. I mean, right? Like in the NBA, you might go from. I don't know Atlanta to Charlotte, which is a forty five minute. Yeah. Flight maybe, you know, or Philly is an hour and a half flight. You know, from here you might go from Moscow to Barcelona. So you're traveling five hours, Um, time change is different, Um, your commercial flights, you know, uh, it's just different. The weather, the, it's it's totally different. So um, I would say, yeah. And generally speaking, how is it to be on the road, like almost every day or every two days? Um... It all depends on where you're at in your life, I would say, too, yeah. you know. Uh, when you're young and you, you've done it, not not a lot, and you're like, oh, this is super cool, yeah. like, I'm in a different, you know. Just like anything you do. Once you do it every day for years and years and years, you're like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> I, I could be at one place for a little while. Okay. <laughs> How do you see the future of Yuli? I think it's going to, I think it's growing. I think Number one, everything is becoming global. Yeah. Everything. Um, so basketball is not different. I see it becoming maybe a closed league at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll see. It's going to grow. Mm-hmm. Uh, the game of basketball is growing. So uh, we'll see. It's, it's, it's definitely on the up and up. Yeah. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to Derek and see you in two weeks for a new episode of Elpa Podcast.